All right, the question is, can I really destroy every common opening response using one gambit, which is known as the intercontinental ballistic missile gambit, or oh, the so-called Tennyson gambit? Can I? Where am I getting the inspiration from? Well, I'm just trying to test the gambit lines that I covered in this video that I published on my second channel called Casper Chess Clips. So let me try to see how effective these Tennyson gambit traps are in real life against real human opponents. Let's go. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Okay, I'm playing against a 2049 rated opponent and knight to f3 is what I intended to play. There we see pawn to f5. I was expecting to see d5 after which I was going to go e4 anyways. So this is kind of the dodge, but I'm still going to shock my opponent with my preparation. So d3, I just want black to take so that I can take back with my bishop. Ah, oh, there we see h6. So I guess I have to take on e4 with my knight. And after knight takes, I have queen h5. And that will probably be met. Yep. So knight takes e4. My opponent shouldn't take though. Because <laughs> I'll go queen h5 check and met. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, my opponent. How can a fully grown beard man miss that? Oh, I'm just joking. I don't know whether my opponent has a beard or not. Don't take offense. This is how we joke at Casper Chess. So let me just show you quickly what my opponent was trying to do, maybe. So I guess my opponent was trying to transpose this into the dash defense. Let me show you. For example, after d4, black normally plays pawn to f5 on this move, expecting you to go knight to f3, after which they play knight to f6 next. f5 is the dash defense by the way so so i guess this is what my opponent was expecting that maybe after knight to f3 and f5 i would go back to d4 and then we transpose back to the dutch defense lines and this is usually the consequence of only mastering one opening response or one opening you need to know at least a variety of openings for you to mean learn the art of transpositions right next game okay I'm playing against a 1939 rated opponent, still the Tennyson Gambit in mind. There we see some kind of the French defense where black goes d5. Next. Let me just show you. It's like the game started with e4 and then black responded with e6. And then after something like knight to f3, black plays d5 and then I go pawn to d3 expecting black to take on e4 and then i go knight g5 so let me try to transpose the game into this line so this is the current position e4 is the main idea expecting d5 though that's what most french players play let's see yep i mean what else d5 is just natural to most french players and now i go pawn to d3 trying to convert this game back to the tennis zone hoping my opponent will take on e4 Yep. Hey guys, if you are wondering how I know these things, I have played the tennis on Gambit for so many years, so experience is also talking. There we see knight to f6. By the way, I was waiting for black to take on d3, after which I was going to take back with the, my light squad bishop. Against knight to f6, I remember covering the move knight c3. Not taking, by the way, because if I take, I mean, I will have to accept playing the rest of the game without queen so knight c3 is the main move that i recommended in my tutorial video which you can find on my second channel so if black plays bishop b4 i'll simply resign no i'll play bishop d2 <laughs> okay point takes now i can take back with my bishop and if h6 i'll simply play knight g e4 that's why we play knight c3 by the way to support the upcoming knight g e4 in case of h6 uh why do i have my second channel why did i create Casper Chess Clips. Well, the reason is simple. I just don't want to be mixing my uploads. It's weird. Imagine today I upload a short, tomorrow I upload a short clip, the other day I upload a long form video. It just didn't work well for my main channel. That's why I decided to create a separate channel where to be posting some exciting clips. Be sure to subscribe there as well, just to support. Right, so if H6, I plan to go on night GE4 period. And my long term plan, by the way, is to cast along and play pawn to g4. So that's coming. I need to free up my dark squad bishop. So bishop f4 is the move to consider you guys. Why? Because I'm stopping knight e5 in the near future. I don't want 
that queen's knight to a double attack my light squad bishop and my queen so that's why i played bishop f4 to stop knight e5 in the future or rather in the near future and that's what it means to think ahead of time in chess if h6 i have knight ge4 again and just like i said the main plan is to castle long in most of these positions so castle long and go pawn to g4 just to open up the king side what is that knight d5 is a uh, Mistake, you guys, because see, now the h7 pawn has become vulnerable. That knight is no longer guarding that pawn. So I can take on h7, yep. Bishop takes h7 check, and that's not a Greek gift sacrifice, by the way, because my bishop is defended by my knight, and I have queen h5 coming. Yeah, so I can already see a mate coming, you guys. And this is why I keep on saying, if you play very well, or if you keep on attacking and playing aggressively, it is not you who is going to checkmate your opponent. It is actually them who are going to blunder and give you a chance to win. So don't even stress, just play good attacking chess. Your opponent will get tired and blunder someday. That's how I win most of my games, not because I'm black. <laughs> That's another joke. A bad joke. Okay, now queen h5. Let's see what my opponent is going to do. I plan to go bishop g6 and mate somehow. If bishop h6, I'll simply take. And my opponent is taking a bit of time here. Let's see what he is up to. I just want to play bishop g6. Like, really, there's nothing else I'm thinking about. Now we see bishop h6. What did I say? Just taking. Bishop takes h6. And now I plan to go bishop g5, discovery check, and then win the queen. That is in case black plays king takes h7. Let's see what else my opponent can do here. I don't know, maybe queen takes d5. Yep, so queen takes d5. Yeah, that looked logical. So I think I can now, I think I can now play something like bishop g5. Next, bishop g6 check and then mate on h7 with my queen. So far, so good. I guess black is gonna take on g5, just a desperado move. But I'll just take back with my queen. What else can I do? And I also have bishop e4, discovery check and mate on h7. So there are so many ways in which I can end this game. And I forgot to say my opponent is a 1939 rated player did i i think i did mention at the beginning so you can see what i'm doing with my arrows this is all that i'm thinking about in case of queen a5 check i'll just play pawn to b4 and then play bishop d2 to block the check in case of queen takes b4 check and now my opponent is taking forever to make a move. Wow. All right, back to our game. Okay, finally there we see rook d8. I went for a walk outside. No, I'm just joking. I was just staring at the screen like a kid. Anyways, now bishop d3 discovery check. Yep, and this is met. No matter what black does. Because my bishop is cutting that diagonal. So that is checkmate so i can say my opponent played very well in the opening stage he only messed up the game somewhere in the middle game so let me play another game probably my last game for today with the tennis on gambit right another game against a 1948 rated player this time so knight to f3 is the goal trying to play the tennis on gambit again if d5 or i can still transpose the game even if black plays something else there we see d5 still. So point to e4 is the idea. If point takes, I have knight g5. Yep, so knight g5. Oh, there we see f5, kind of the dutch, but this time with the pawn on e4. So against this, I still like going d3. Yep, because if point takes, I'm gonna take back with my light squad bishop again. And I just removed that, by the way. If h6, I have queen h5 check. Now we see e5. What should I do against e5? I know the idea is to go e4 next, but with e5, black created all these light square weaknesses. 
Besides have bishop b5 check in some lines and then go knight f7 check, win the queen, blah blah blah. I also have uh, queen d5. So I think something is fishy here. This is not the best response against my tennis on gambit. So I guess e4 is still the idea. What should I do here? Maybe I can just cast a shot first. Yeah, putting my king to safety, still waiting for e4, and then I have rook e1 or bishop b5 check. I have so many ideas, but castle short is more like an advanced prophylactic move, waiting for my opponent to blunder. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. f4 again creates another weakness on g6, guys, and I can sense a mate or something like that here because of queen h5. So f4 is a bad move. I know black was trying to cut the communication between my bishop and my knight, hoping for queen takes g5, but I have queen h5 check. Okay, g6, I can just sacrifice my bishop. Yep, bishop takes and after pawn takes, I can either take the rook or even better take the pawn because if king d7, I have queen e6 checkmate. So I can even pre-move this. I don't expect king e7 here. If king d7, I have queen e6. Oh my, oh, damn it. I just dunked my queen. Ah, okay. Bishop takes e6. <laughs> oh, who am I? Okay, let's continue. Knight c3. Ah, uh, okay. Guys, forgive me. I was doing commentary while playing. So I'm just playing by hope now trying to cause chaos <laughs> oh okay if e takes f4 i have rook takes e6 check i'm just trying to prolong the game as much as i can oh wait am i coming back what guys see what is happening here i think i'm coming back into the game again i have rook takes d8 Oh, this check here. Knight e2 check. Oh, first I take. I might even win this game. Wait a second. I'm taking the knight. I'm probably taking the rook. What is happening? So bishop check and then I win the rook on h8. Or maybe I take the bishop. With my rook. Oh. I'm running low on time. Bishop takes h8. And just like that, I'm winning. What is happening in the world today? What's wrong with this generation? Ah, oh, no, this is not fair, you guys. <laughs> I was supposed to lose this game, like, for sure. No, 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 I have bad manners. This is not right. I am being a very bad example to all of you guys i should have just resigned but anyways my opponent is supposed to you know prove his end game skills and the ability to <laughs> play well in the end game and this is why i don't believe in resigning because i'm not just sure of my opponent's ability to play well in the end game i know this is a little bit disappointing but you guys please understand this is what chess is all about. There are three results, win, draw, and lose. There's nothing I could have done. <sighs> After all, I'm only human, met. Sorry for this, guys, but I hope you understand. Let me know what you think in the comment section and remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, because that's what encourages me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. And my E5 defense course is still on promo and I just finished organizing the master PGN to make it easier for you guys to follow, which I'm going to include in my complete E5 defense course, because of course we are still building it with my team. Currently we are working on the anti-scorch gambit repertoire for black and then we are also going to include the four knights defense the anti-ponziani opening the three knights opening and also the anti gyoko pianissimo so this is an ongoing e5 defense course that we are working on and there are more improvements to come in the near future so at the moment it's almost free of course with a small commitment fee attached for research purposes so be sure to check it out on my channel or on my membership 
membership page that's on patreon you can also find it there right thank you for watching this video until next time let me know what you think about this game for today until next time bye bye